everybody, it's Diana from Diana Marie Home. Today I'm going to talk about when to start your flower seeds. If you're new, I'm glad you're here. I share all about our 1800s Fixer Upper farmhouse. We're in upstate New York and we are working to restore it on a budget. I also share about farm life, home decor, DIYs and gardening. So be sure to hit subscribe. I also have a blog, dianamariehome.com, where I share more about not only what I'm talking about in today's video, um, but there's a whole bunch more about our farmhouse and everything there. I'm also on Instagram, dianamariehome, and I share just kind of daily behind the scenes there. Today's video is all about when to start flower seeds. After I shared what seeds I would be planting for 2022. I had some questions about how to know when to actually start your seeds. So I am in zone 5B and um, while that can kind of be helpful, it doesn't really, like if you're also in zone 5B, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would start seeds at the same time as me. Um, and there's so many different zones. So zones basically just tell you how cold your winter gets and it's more for perennials to know if you can keep certain perennials over winter Winter without them dying it doesn't necessarily tell you when your last frost date is I hope that makes sense so I thought it would just be helpful to kind of explain how to actually figure out what date you should plant seeds for where you live specifically the first thing you need to know is your last frost date so to figure that out you can just google last frost date and then your city um, or the closest city that you live near and I like to use Farmer's Almanac for that date. They have a bunch of research to predict when the last frost date is, but that isn't a guarantee. So for example, when I did that, in the past it said around May 15th, but this year it actually said May 3rd. However, that is not usually the date I go by where I live. It's just kind of known that the safe date for when you definitely won't have a frost again is Memorial Day weekend. So it's important to know when your last frost date is, but also like talk to other local gardeners or call your extension office and ask them what they recommend for your specific area. Lily came to say hi, it would not be a video without Lily in it. Once you have your last frost date, again, not a guarantee, but a good starting point, then you can start figuring out when you're gonna need to start planting your seeds. This is where it can get a little bit confusing, but there's different types of plants. So there's tender annual and hardy annual, and I'm gonna talk more about this. Tender annual plants are going to be your plants like zinnias and cosmos that are sensitive to cold and really just cannot survive a frost. So for these plants, you're going to want to take that last frost date. Now for this, I'm going to use that like Memorial Day weekend, May 28th-ish for me um, time because I know that's when we're really safe from a frost. And then I'll count back the number of weeks that are recommended for starting those seeds. For example, for zinnias, it's recommended to start them four to six weeks before you plan to plant them out. So if I'm using that last weekend in May as my time that I want to plant out, I would count back four to six weeks. So that would bring you early May or mid April for starting those seeds indoors. That's gonna be different for each pack of seeds. So you just want to look on the back of your seed packet or um, go, Johnny's has a lot of great information on their website, johnny's.com. And you can just look up like when to sow your seeds indoors and it will tell you. So then you take that last date and you count back that many number of weeks and that's when you start them. Then we have plants that are hardy annuals. These plants aren't necessarily perennials, but they're hardy and can actually withstand some colder weather. Not only can these plants withstand colder weather, but they actually thrive in it and you'll end up with stronger, healthier plants because of it. So I'm gonna go more into detail about which plants are tender annuals and which ones are hardy annuals, uh, but just for the sake of this demonstration. Um, some hardy annuals are like Caladula and snapdragons. 
So for these plants, you can plant them out before your last frost, which sounds crazy, but these plants will actually do better for it. So these plants, you actually want to transplant out six to eight weeks before your last frost. So if we're going with that end of May time, then six to eight weeks would be early to mid April. But that's when you're actually wanting to plant these plants outside so you have to actually get them started even before that so you actually need to count back another six to eight weeks to find out when you should be starting those seeds inside so for example if we have a last frost day of let's say may 30th and you want to grow caladula you would want to count back six to eight weeks from 5:30, which i already did the math that would leave you between April 4th and April 18th. Um, and then you would have to count back another four to five weeks to know when to sow them indoors. So that means you could start seeds, Caladula seeds, anytime between February 28th and March 21st for the earliest planting. That's so crazy. I have to admit, I have not done this before, but I have been reading this book from Lisa Mason Ziegler and she's been doing this. She didn't invent this concept. This is like what our grandmothers used to do and she is just doing a lot of research and bringing this planting method back and just sharing that this is possible and we should be doing this so um definitely recommend this book she has a lot of great information just about what cold hardy annuals are um how to plant them just like the details of it and then she gives a really awesome list she goes into detail but then there's an appendix in the back of all the uh, varieties that she grows early so I definitely recommend this this is what I've been referring to a lot advantages of starting seeds inside are that you usually get an earlier harvest which means you're gonna have flowers sooner but it's really important to know when to plant certain flowers if you were to plant zinnias at the same time that you plant your cold hardy annuals your zinnias will get way too leggy won't have enough nutrients and will likely die before you plant them out it will be a waste of time space and resources so you don't want to do that you really want to make sure that you're getting that timing right as hard as it is to wait you don't want to plant things too early and you really want to make sure you're planting things at the right time you don't want to just plant everything all at once i did that early on in my gardening time and i planted peas and beans and tomatoes peppers squash all on the same day because i didn't know and that does not work so you definitely want to pay attention to when it says to plant those seeds and we're going to talk about more of that in detail but um yeah the advantage of starting these cold hardy seeds earlier are that you will have more space so by the time your cold hardy plants are ready to go out is right around the time that you're going to be ready to start planting your tender annuals like your zinnias and cosmos you'll be able to maximize your growing space because as you're moving out those uh, cold hardy annuals or cool flowers are what they're called um, as you're moving those out, you're freeing up space to start your next round of tender annuals. And when you plant those cool flowers early, you're going to end up with hardier plants and earlier blooms. So it's definitely the best way to do it. There's some things you really need to consider before you jump into starting seeds. Starting seeds can't really, you can do it in windowsills, but not on a large scale. Seedlings need a lot of light. So you really wanna think about what you need to give the seedlings what they need to be healthy. You need to think about the space it will take to start the seedlings indoors. If you need heat mats, a lot of seeds need heat to germinate. You need proper lighting, fertilizer. So last year I didn't use fertilizer and my starts were really small. And um, I was just trying to troubleshoot what it was and I realized it was because I wasn't doing fertilizer and they really, once they germinate and they start growing, they really need food. <laughs> fertilizer is their food. So that's something to consider. And then you also need to think about how you're going to harden these seedlings off because once you start them indoors and baby them, you can't just plant them right outside, especially those um, cold hardy perennials. You need to help them adjust to the outdoor weather. So that means slowly bringing them outside and introducing them to those elements outdoors um, a little bit at a time until they're eventually ready to go out on their own full time. The last point that I wanted to make here before we jump into the specific seeds is 
I want to talk about saving seeds. Saving seeds is so important. That's why I have really been transitioning over to open pollinated heirloom seeds over the last few years. Um, even if they're not heirloom, I still want them to be open pollinated so that I can save seeds from those and know that they're going to grow into a into a good plant. The heirlooms, you can be even more confident that the seed will be the same as the parent plant. Hybrids, it's a little bit up in the air what you'll get, but it will still be a flower or foods. Saving seeds is not only good for sustainability, but it's also so cost effective and it just opens up so many more possibilities. So when you save seeds, so many plants produce so many seeds. And when you're buying a packet of seeds, it is affordable. It's, you know, a couple dollars depending on where you get it. You can even buy seeds from the Dollar Tree and they do work. That's where I used to get all my cut flowers from. But you're paying a certain amount for a small amount of seed. And so for me, I always get kind of stressed out like, oh, if I mess this up, my seeds are gone. Where when I save seeds, I can have hundreds and hundreds of seeds of a variety to be able to share and to be able to experiment more with. Uh, for example, last year I had saved a bunch of radish seeds and I was out in the garden. I, it was like either late March or early April. It was very early on, way too soon to be planting anything, but I just wanted to get my hands in the dirt. I just wanted to, I was in the garden, I just wanted to do something. So I took some of those radish seeds and I just put them in my raised beds because I had nothing to lose. I saved them. I didn't spend money on them. I knew I had enough uh, radish seeds for the the growing season. I wasn't stressed out about how many seeds I had for the radishes. So I put them in the garden, not expecting anything to happen. And you know what? They grew and they were the first thing I harvested from my garden that year. And it was so cool. So save seeds, you'll have more, you'll have more to share and you'll be able to experiment more and ultimately learn more from gardening, which is one of my favorite parts about gardening. I hope that was helpful with kind of just like the background. Um, we're gonna go through individual varieties. Um, these are flower seeds that I'll be planting, uh, but if you have other questions that I didn't address, just leave them in the comment box. I try to keep up on that and read those and I'm happy to address those questions. And if you have that question, it's very likely that someone else is also wondering the same thing. So just drop those questions in the comments. So I went through all my flowers and I made this little chart note to myself about is this variety cold hardy? When do you need to start the seeds for it? How long does it take to mature? Should you transplant it or direct sow it? And then spacing and things like that, but we're not going to go over that in this video. So we're going to focus on if it's cold hardy, if it is, that usually means you can plant it before your last frost and when you want to sow those seeds. In this book, Cool Flowers, she also talks about how some of these cool flowers you can plant in the fall for the following year. Um, I did not discover this in time to be able to do that. So right now we're just going to be talking about the plants that you can plant in spring before your last frost. Apple of Peru. This is a, uh, plant that I grew for filler last year and it was crazy. It got huge. I wasn't expecting it. It provided so many stems for filler. It was crazy. Um, I'm not sure if this is a cool flower. It wasn't in the book, but when I was trying to do some Googling, so if I'm not sure, I'll Google like the variety and then cold hardiness. And what came up on Google was that it's possibly hardy to a zone seven, which tells me that I might be able to plant that out before my last frost date. It's recommended to sow this seed four to six weeks before planting it out. So uh, what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to experiment and I'm going to try starting the seed four to six weeks before, about six weeks before my last frost. I'm not going to do this for every single one, but for example, if we have a last frost date of May 30th and I want to so and I want to plant this one out, let's say four weeks before the last frost, that brings us to around May 1st, and then we want to start it about a month before that. I'll be starting this one anytime mid-March to early April. Because I don't know if this is cold hardy, I will also be planting, starting some of these four to six weeks before my last frost with the intention of planting them out after the last frost, just to make sure that I have this variety. It's a little bit of an experiment, but um, yeah, that's the fun of gardening. You just learn as you go. Aster is another one that I want to test to see if it could go out a little bit before the last frost. I'm really not sure, but you want to sow that one six to eight weeks before the last frost. So I got these this information from the back of the seed packets and if it wasn't there I went to Johnny's and they have the information 
But what's important to know is that information will, like when you're talking about cool flowers, the ones that you can plant out before the last frost, it's not going to be on the seed packet because the seed companies just go by when it's safe after the last frost. They aren't, they aren't following this technique of planting out before the last frost. So to know when to plant those out, in general, you can just count back six to eight weeks before your last frost. But I just want to make note of that. That information isn't going to be on the back of the seed packet. Bachelor's button is a cool flower and it's hardy to zone six. And you want to sow that three to four weeks before you plan on planting it out. Basil is something that I love for filler and it is not cold hardy. It is very sensitive to frost so I'll definitely be waiting until the end of May to start to, to put my basil out but I will be starting that indoors six weeks before then. Bupleurum is a filler that is new to me. I'll be growing this year. It's hardy to a zone five. So this one I have been using that end of May as our last frost date because I know that's when it's completely safe, but because Farmer's Almanac said my last frost date is May 3rd, these plants that I know are hardy, down my zone is zone 5B, so the plants I know are hardy to my zone, and I might even push it if I have enough seeds to zone 6, I'm going to try planting out using that May 3rd frost date, last frost date, so it will kind of be pushing the limits, but I just want to see. I want to experiment. If I could get those plants in the ground, we're talking a month earlier, um, then I could have blooms even sooner, so I want to try that, um, and I'll try it out and see what happens, and what's cool about that is I'll be able to come back and tell you if it worked or not. Caladula I used as an example. It's hardy to zone 7, and that one you want to plant 4 to 5 weeks before the last frost. I haven't planted this before. Um, it's only supposed to be 50 to 55 days to maturity, which means that it's going to be one of the first to bloom, and if you can plant that out even before your last frost, that should give you super early flowers, so I'm really excited to try that one out. Celosia is not a cool flower. I'll be starting that one four to six weeks before my last frost to plan out after it's safe. Copper plume I had a hard time finding. I think it's hardy to zone eight, so that's one I'll be experimenting with, but you want to start that four to six weeks before you plant that out. Cosmos, again, are not cold hardy, um, so you want to wait until you're free of frost and those get started four to six weeks before. Feverview is hardy to zone five so another cool flower and you want to start that five to seven weeks before you want to plant that out so again cool flower you're planting that out six to eight weeks before your last frost and then count back another five to seven weeks. Gamfrina is not a cool flower but you start at six to eight weeks. Love in a mist or nigella is a cool flower hardy to zone six. I don't actually have oh so you want to direct sow nigella so uh, about six to eight weeks before your last frost date you can go out and just plant it in your garden or wherever you're going to plant it and then it will come up on its own. Orlea is another cool flower hardy to zone six and you want to start that four to six weeks before you plant that out. Selvia there are different varieties, but they seem like most of them are pretty hardy. And you want to start those anywhere from 6 to 8 or 10 weeks uh, before you plan to plant those out. So again, cold flower, you count back 6 to 8 weeks, and then another 6 to 10 weeks to know when to start those seeds. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but it was just kind of a concept that took me a minute to really understand. So I hope that by repeating it, it just helps to kind of like help sink in what this concept is and how it works. Snapdragons are hardy to zone four, another cool flower, and you want to start those eight to ten weeks before you plant them out, so count back six to eight weeks, and then another eight to ten weeks, that's when you start your seeds indoors. Status is hardy to zone eight, um, so this one I'm gonna be experimenting with. Um, you want to start that five to six weeks before you plant it out. Straw flower is hardy to zone eight, and that's six to eight weeks before you plant it out. Sunflowers are one that I'm going to be pushing the limits with this year. They are not cold hardy, but I have heard that they kind of, they can handle a little bit of a light frost. So I'm going to try it. Um, Sunflowers don't like to be transplanted. However, I have found that I have to start my seeds in a cell pack because otherwise I have chipmunks and they just follow behind me and eat the seeds. At least that's what it feels like. So I always pre-start my sunflower seeds, but you just want to do it like 
to maybe three weeks before you plan to plant them out. They don't need a huge head start, but I found if they've already germinated and started coming up, the chipmunks are much less likely to bother them. Sweet Annie, I believe, is hardy down to a zone five. I'm going to be experimenting with that. You want to start five to six weeks before you plan to plant it out. Yarrow is hardy down to a zone two, so this is a very cold hardy it's actually considered a perennial. This one's very safe to plant out early and you want to get that started 8 to 10 or 12 weeks before you plan on planning it out but it's a perennial so it will keep coming back year after year once you get it started. Zinnias are not a cool flower. They are sensitive to frost and you want to get those started four to six weeks before you plant them out. I hope this was helpful. I know I didn't cover every flower. I was just going through the flowers that I plan to plant this year. A lot of those were in this book, Cool Flowers, but a lot of them weren't, and they're just flowers that I think might follow that same process um, and work, but I'm just not sure. So I'm going to experiment, and I'm excited to tell you what works and what doesn't. I think that's one of the best parts of gardening is the experimentation and learning part. So I'm sorry I couldn't give you exact dates of when to start each seed, uh, but I hope that this information was helpful so that you can find your exact frost date and be able to count back to figure out when exactly you need to start each variety because it's just it's not clear cut and um, even if I told you the exact dates that I was starting my seeds unless you were my neighbor it really wouldn't be super helpful so um, this is more of the information you need to figure it out for exactly where you live again if I didn't answer all of your questions, just leave them in the comment box. I'm happy to help in any way I can, but thank you for hanging out with me today. I will see you in that next video.